Now that's the attraction for female. So the bigger the balls you've got, the better misses you're going to find. There he goes. He's got a ball going up, up on the side there. Now, picking up a mate, the dung beetle will dig a hole in the ground. We're actually seeing this starting to happen already here. A big beetle is the size of a good shoebox. And they'll push all these balls underground. The female will then lay an egg on the outer edge of each dung ball. Once a hole is full, she'll seal herself up inside and dies. But simply by sealing up the hole, it stops the dung from drying out. Of course, there, um, the larvae that hatch out burrow into the dung ball. But they feed on the dung, pupate, and start the cycle again. The beauty here is, though, that by taking the dung off the surface of the earth, it stops your flies from breeding. At the same time, not all that dung is going to be used. So whatever's left becomes nutrients for your different plants and vegetation. And the beetles themselves are a huge food source for many of the different lizards, birds, some of the smaller mammals. There's a whole biodiversity just inside this. And then you look at the diversities, you've got these incredible, almost metallic greens. Um, these almost gold and deep urban reds. They're all just different species of dung beetles. Now, probably one of the very few things Australia imported that didn't have a negative impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.